Hi, it's Bob. Let's talk about agile programs and how to manage a project with Twitter and machine learning. This conversation may be most interesting to product owners and scrum masters as they'll own the work being described. Managing social media and AI adds complexity to the typical agile project. And in this session, we will describe some of those differences. Starting with a business purpose for this application, we want to determine what is the favorite soft drink. And we want to know that from users in every state. We want to track their favorite soft drinks monthly and then be able to understand separately whether they like the taste, the, it's their favorite because of the cost, or if they're influenced by the availability of the drink. We'll then take that as input and compare them statistically to understand why it is that people like those soft drinks. There could be a question of why go to all this trouble when you could just look at sales data and determine how much product is being sold in every geography. But understanding how much is sold doesn't give you insight into why it is sold. So by looking at factors like taste or price, or availability, a drink marketing team can change their strategies to increase their sales or price or customer satisfaction. Let's take a tweet and use it as a sample of how this AI-based sentiment analysis might work. So we'll start out and recognize first that tweets may be short, but that doesn't mean that they're simple linguistically. One of the first steps is to look for the entities, the nouns. And that entity recognition would find that Bob's Root Beer is an entity. Barbecue also is one. Root Beer is. Restaurants is an entity. Meat, restaurant, and place are all entities. So that's the starting point that most of these algorithms use to start their sentiment analysis. The next step is to classify those entities. And we can see that root beer we have classified as a soft drink. Once we've classified these entities, we determine the aspects related to each one of the entities. So for root beer, we've targeted taste and availability as sentence or sentence fragments to be analyzed. So here we say that Bob's root beer tastes like real root beer. So the relevant target is the taste of a soft drink. And then when we say that that root beer is not available in very many restaurants, that is an availability target. When we look farther down and see that meat is tasteless and tough, None of those things are targeted. They're not targeted as aspects of an entity, and meat is not an entity which we're looking for. So by looking at the category, the aspect, and the value of that aspect, we can determine if there's a positive or a negative impression associated with each aspect of the drink. Now we have a pretty good understanding of the business process. We can start thinking about the technology and how we can start putting together that process into features to be allocated to the team. Most of the features in this Agile implementation are fairly straightforward and easy to understand. The data is fairly simple. The tweet's not a complex data structure. The application logic is pretty straightforward, and the GUI interface is not particularly difficult. The interaction with the artificial intelligence engine is complex. That's where a large percentage of the effort is going to go. The application starts off with a data request for tweets and brings the data back to the application, which stores it into a database. Raw tweets are fed to the AI engine. The AI engine then passes the tweet analysis back to the application logic. Then the GUI receives the statistics from the application logic. I've managed a couple of projects where we followed through these same steps in the same business process. Although each time it's been with different tools, different technology, and different subject matters. So as you're planning your project, expect that it will be different. But you will have the need to create features that are fully specified. Having the data and the services handshakes well understood before the teams start working lets them progress independently and lets them avoid having to negotiate the handshakes between components in the middle of their project. And this is especially true for the data science work. The data science work is sufficient 
sophisticated and iterative, and the features will have to be written as specifically as possible, and they will need to allow for some significant testing and iterations to make sure that the approaches that are being defined by the data science team give the results that they're looking for. In this kind of project, it is not unusual for the project to have to change some of its system software infrastructure in mid-project. There are times when we find that the algorithms we thought were going to perform well actually did not perform well with this particular data set. In those cases, adjustments have to be made. So while the rest of the program is probably pretty straightforward, there needs to be particular care around the features for the data science team. We've discussed both the epics and the features, and in the next episode, we'll talk more about the program structure and the program processes, especially the governance process. Hopefully, you found some of this topic interesting. Uh, please watch the continuation of this topic if you did. Thank you for watching, and you can reach me with questions or comments at the contact information below.